Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. And today what we're going to tackle is one of the corporate cyberpunk security officers from Anvil Industry. Now this fella here is currently for the August Digital Forge offering, but you do keep an eye on the website because even if you don't have a printer, they've been making sure that these are available in resin. Uh, there's normally a couple of months lag between the digital release and the physical, but you will be able to pick these up if you like the look of them. Now lots of cyberpunk games and even some modern ones, you're going to want something that looks like corporate security or police officers or something to fill in as your NPCs or bad guys. This fella here, I might have been playing a lot of Payday 2 recently. <laughs> Anyhow, all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So once your miniature is cleaned up and assembled, first thing to do is to prime it. And for this guy, I've used a spray of Ultramarines Blue from the Army Painter. And it's a really nice medium blue. It's a bit lighter than what McCrag blue will give you. And honestly, the difference between them is mostly cosmetic. I'd suggest if you like McCrag blue or you have it, you can just paint a coat or two of ultramarine blue over the top. I like the lighter color for what we're going to do. You may see as well that there is a slight shine to this primer. It's got a fairly slick surface. Now, if you don't like that, what you can do is just to hit this with a really quick matte varnish. Give it a little bit of texture, a bit of grip for the paint. But for what I'm going to be using, I don't think it's going to matter. But as a matter of preference, that's the way to fix that. But we are going to start by making that blue a little more interesting. So what I have here, this is Ethereum Blue, one of the dry paints from Citadel. And I'm using one of the Army Painter small dry brushes here. I just like the wedged tip. What I'm going to do is very lightly flick along areas of detail where I want a little bit more visual interest. So creases in his clothing and such like that. Now, I'm not worried if I hit his armor. We are, of course, going to paint that a different color later. So you can really be quite generous with this. And yeah, just pick out all of the blue. You might see straight away why I wasn't really fussed about applying a varnish, because the little bitty texture that we get from the dry brush is actually going to help for all of the other base coats that are going on over top. And it's going to add a little bit of visual interest to our blue. But in order to bring that together and make sure it's not quite so stark, what I'm going to do is apply a little Drakenhof Nightshade. Now this is the old stuff. Uh, I don't know what the new stuff is like. I haven't got it yet. So it's probably more or less the same. What I'm going to do is cruise over the entire miniature. And yeah, Drakenhof Nightshade. We'll see it brings in the blue, makes it a little more subtle, and adds plenty of shading to our uniform. So once I've applied this, I'll leave that to dry for about half an hour, and then see what we've got. Now that won't take long to dry at all, and when it does, you get a nicely textured uniform. That bittiness that we were worried about actually works really well for making it look a little more like cloth, which, to my mind, brilliant. We'll move on now to painting some white details, because these are going to be easier to cover over with black later on than trying to painstakingly paint around them once they're on. What I have here is Corax White, and some folks really don't get along with this. Uh, it does need a little bit of maintenance. You do want to add a little bit of medium and maybe an agitator or two into the pot. Uh, but once you've done that, you get a white that covers extremely well. So I'm going to go around the edges of his shoulder pads with this. You'll see why in a second. And on his helmet, I'm going to paint most of it in white. Now we're going to apply a couple of contrast colors to those areas. First off, I have Iandin Yellow and a medium layer brush. I'm just going to put a little of this over the white that we've just painted. And I'm not worried if I hit, you see, the part that's going to be black later. I do really want to avoid the blue uniform, though. And then while that dries, we'll apply some Apothecary White over the helmet. Now this will give us a very cool grey finish, uh, which is going to be super easy to highlight, but we'll still have a little bit of shading without having to break out something so stark as Nuln Oil. Now at last we're at the point where we can start applying some of the black, and I'm going to do this using two different colours, because I want a little bit of variation between the fabric and the metallic parts that we're going to be putting on. 
So I'm going to start off first of all with Black Grey from Vallejo. Now if you want to stick to Citadel, this is basically Corvus Black. Uh, I am using this because the coverage, well, it is much better. So I'm going to apply this over his boots and his gloves. As he goes on, oh, nice. Now not only his boots and gloves, but I also painted in some of the straps on this dude using the same method. So you'll see here, for example, on his boots, the straps and buckles I've painted in that black, but I've left the padding underneath the armor plates in blue, and that's going to be important for this step. What I have now, this is Vallejo's flat black, and I'm using this for the same reason. Ah, that coverage. So I'm using a nice big brush just to quickly lay down the majority of the color on the shield here, but then I'm going to swap to a smaller one to do in the armor plates. And his boots are again going to be a really good example. So I've got that black, a medium layer brush, and I'm just going to paint in the panels. But again, leave that nice soft padded stuff underneath. Now that will take a little bit of doing, because there's quite a lot of armor plates on him. But suddenly he doesn't look like quite such a joke. <laughs> that, uh, that sinister black appearance really does add a lot to the miniature. But it is a little bit flat. So particularly on the shield, what I'm going to do, I have here one of my little dry brushes and some Dawnstone. Now this is the dry version, and I'm going to very lightly just flick along the edges until I pick up some of that detail to make it look a little more interesting. I'd recommend as well just a tiny bit of this on his gun. Uh, now you'll see I haven't done the back of his knuckles. Now there's a big padded glove section over the back of that. Now I figured that would probably be soft, to allow it for his hand to flex, so I haven't painted that black. It is also possible, if you've got a small enough dry brush and don't have very much paint on your brush at all, to dry brush the uh, edges of his mask as well, which has turned out pretty well. I still don't know what color to do that lens though. Hmm. Anyhow, I have now Iron Hand Steel, and I'm going to pick out just a couple of little details uh, that I want to be silver, because I don't want to go overboard with this. But we'll apply this now, before the uh, the shade goes on. Alright, well, there's really not very much of that metallic stuff at all in the end. What I've got now is some Nuln Oil, and I'm going to use this to cover over the soft stuff that we did earlier, so the black-grey. And I'm also going to pop it over those little bits of metallic detail we've done, and over his pistol. Now while those dry, let's have a little fun. What I've done is to get some of the Corax white from earlier, and just dot it in the three little lamps on the side of a shield here. I've then mixed in about half and half contrast medium with some Blood Angels red. And what I'll do is just dot that on the lamp at the end here. The same mix here of medium and talisar blue, and we're going to paint the leftmost light with this. I mean, these might not even be lamps, but I think it looks cooler if they are. And then in the center, just neat from the pot, a little apothecary white. Ta-da! Does not hurt to be silly and have some fun on occasion. What I've got now, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and highlight some of the armor plates. So I've got Dawnstone as a layer paint here. Now here's the cool thing about how we've painted the black so far. We've literally only done a single flat color of it. So if I apply a highlight and it goes on a little too thick or I don't like where it is, I can just go straight back to that black and tidy it up. So I'm going to do this over some of the armor plates just to define some of the edges a little better. So, for example, here on his wrist, you see I've gone a little overboard. Let's just get in there with some fresh black paint. And our highlight is perfect. Now, particularly on the pouches on his waist, you might want to do something similar to make them a little brighter. So I have here Storm Vermin Fur, which is a good sort of off black, soft, leathery color. And then if you want, the same principle applies with the white. So I have here a little pure white, this is White Scar. And what I'm going to do is just a little of this at the very edges 
of the helmet. A right, quick change of plans on the fly. Uh, unfortunately, that highlight didn't go on quite as I had planned. So what I've got is some fresh Corax white. And I'm instead going to carefully paint over the flat areas and leave the shaded apothecary white in the recesses. That might give me a slightly better look. Okay, that looks way better. Now we can try those white scar highlights. Now there's our winner. What we're gonna do now, I mean, he's pretty much finished, but I do wanna touch in these bricks that he's standing on. What I've got, this is Vallejo's red leather, and I'm going to lay down most of this with my big scraggly medium base brush. When I come up close to his feet, I'm gonna swap on down to a smaller one. Now we'll very lightly dry brush these with some Tyrant Skull. And then tie all of that together with a little bit of Agrax Earthshade. Now we could stop there, but Mrs. Sledge, bless her, has insisted that something needs to go on that shield. And I agree with her. So, what I'm going to show you, I have lurking on my hand here a pencil. Now this is a B. I do recommend a 2B if you can get it, something a little bit softer. Now I'm going to lay down some pencil marks. I found a, a font online that I want to try and copy for this uh, marking here. So by using the pencil, I can lay down basically a guide on where I want my brush to go. And because I haven't uh, done anything to the shield other than that very light dry brush, the same rule applies with everything else we've done so far. I can very easily just fix it with some black. So we go back to our Corax white from earlier, and I'm going to start carefully following mostly the guides that I've laid down. I want my lettering to be just a little thicker than the pencil marks. Uh, so some of this is likely to get a little out of my control, but not to worry. And there I've laid down most of the lettering. What I've got is some black, and now I can tidy it up. It doesn't have to go on perfectly. All right, now that's not looking too bad. It's still a little wonky in some places. I reckon if you were to take more time and a little more care, you'd get a nicer result than I have there. But I need to edit this video at some point, so that'll do for me. What I'm going to do now is hit him with a spray varnish. I'm going to use Vallejo's mat like I normally do, and then finish off the rest of the base. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all done. So there at last, our corporate security officer is complete. So what does OCP stand for? Outsourced corporate protection? Who knows? <laughs> it's up to you. As is what you're going to use them for. There's a few games where you're going to need mooks, you know, either cyberpunk games or stuff like Hardwired. Uh, I'll pop a link to a couple of those in the description because I think there are a lot of games out there which folks are going to enjoy. If you like something to like, that looks like this, then there are games you might not know about. So I'll make sure to include a couple in the description. As always, thanks very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Train Boy, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support keeps me in resin and glue, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.